What about the future? When they, they talk about, like, you mentioned iPhones and they say, like, you know, Apple already knows what's five years, 10 years down the line. It's already been seen and discussed and, and they're just kind of working their way through the levels. What about robots and automation? What, um, what's Fanuc doing five, 10 years from now? You know, one of, the, one of the big things that I see there is, is bringing people and robots closer and closer together. Um, when I first started, I, I think I touched on this before, that the robots were in these big cages and the cages were never by the people. So the robots did these robot things over here and then people did these people things over here. Um, and we're seeing step by step that there's still so many things that people are best at um, that, uh, that, that they're, that's never going to change. There, there are things that people can do. The, the, I'm all, you think about what you have with your fingers and your hands and the sense of touch and dexterity that we have. That's something that's going to be really, really hard to replicate um, even 10 years uh, from now. So there's gonna, we have to recognize the things that the people are really good at and the things that automation can be really good at. Um, but sometimes it's going to be hard to implement if those two things have to be really far away from each other, even on a plant floor. So, so one of the things I see in the future for sure is everything is going to get closer and closer together. So something the robot might be good at is picking up something heavy that we don't want people to be picking up all day long. So the robot picks up something heavy and shows it to the person and then the person does something on it. And then the robot brings it over to somebody else. And we're going to start seeing more and more of those merging of uh, things that people are good at and things that robots are good at. And that's all going to be kind of blended together. These new peripheral things that, I mean, the camera technology and the sensing technology is just taking off too. So we're going to see robots that can see people or move around. So instead of the robot that like has to feel you to stop, maybe it sees you before it hits you and, and then moves around you instead of uh, coming close to you. So robots dynamically doing that, stuff like that. So that's awesome. I just got my my daughter a little unicorn robot that she programs and and the vision like it follows lines and you put something in front and it'll stop and stuff like just super cool. Yep. You know what what made uh what I I thought of when you were talking uh do you uh Boston Dynamics? Yep. That they're That's... building that <laughs> it's scary. Like yeah. like this thing like like literally just walks like a dog, right? Like, is oh, it a thought? Is, and then and it opens the door and, and leaps and does flips, and it's actually pretty scary. Yeah. You just think back 10 years between, I mean, you think about what's possible in 10 years. 10 years ago, you, you were seeing like a robot fall down the stairs on stage at like, yeah. a, like an event, and now you're seeing these guys do flips and stuff like that. So and um, they're selling hey, them to just regular companies now. Like I know, right? Small little versions and stuff. But when it's you think about. You need one of those for the house. Get your kids some of one of those. I know. Crazy. You know, we, but we, when you see these things, then all of a sudden you see a soldier and it's carrying the pack for the soldier up these mountains and terrain and different things. Like it's just possibilities are incredible. Yep. You know, I will say, uh, so I 3d printer today, tomorrow. It's coming. And we've been talking about it. for those of you that haven't, or that you know what Titan's talking about. I asked Titan uh, a couple months ago for help because my kid wants a 3D printer. Two of my boys wanted it, and I know Titan has one. And so I ordered it, and if, if any of you have tried to order something uh, through an online service these days, you can tell how bad delivery is and how crazy it is. And I'm, like, waiting. I'm like, my phone's sitting right here. I'm waiting to see what uh, when my 3D printer is getting delivered. So that's another good way to get your kids interested in manufacturing is is – Get it, get a 3D printer. We, me and my two boys, we both and we all invested a hundred bucks a piece, and I have a three hundred dollar printer coming to the house. Hopefully today we'll see if it actually shows up, and and we're gonna start making some cool stuff at home and and see if we can uh, get my boys excited about that too. Yeah, it's so good. A while back, I I started a, I made a maker space for my kids called it Maker Space Seven Seven. My my twins were born on seven seven July seventh, and I uh, just started making things, and we're still. We're still just making things. My uh, daughter just made a rocket, uh, designed and 3D printed the Titan rocket from the Academy uh, this weekend because the rocket went up and stuff. But right. it's cool because you guys see Mike and he's the CEO of Fanuc America. But at the same time, he's a husband. He's a dad. He's a friend. You know, he's 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 just a regular guy. And uh, 
yeah, a couple of months ago, he's just like, hey, I saw you a 3D printer and my kids, I'd love to get one and make this and do this and, and stuff. And uh, now you got it coming and boom. Yep. 